What's up fellow fishing fanatics? My name is Wesley Littlefield and I'm at Redcrest this week. So I decided to talk to a few professional anglers and figure out what the best post-spawn lures were. And here's what they had to say. Hey guys, Michael Neal, Bass Pro Tour Angler. I'm gonna talk to you about three post-spawn bass lures. Number one, when those fish first get off the bed and they're still hanging around, you've got frog yarders and things, a spro frog. Uh, that's a bait you can throw in any type of cover. You can skip under docks, walkways, whatever you want to. Uh, number two is uh, some sort of swim bait, you know, like a big bite suicide shad. Those, a lot of those females are starting to slide out to where they're gonna go for the summertime. That's a great ledge bait. And then last but not least, uh, of course, a Tennessee River favorite is a deep diving crankbait. You know, something like the, the Spro Fat Papa 70, that 10 to 12 foot range is where a lot of those fish will go first stage up for their summertime haunts. And something that you can cover a lot of water with, such as a crankbait, is always a great go-to. Hey guys, Marty Robinson here at the 2023 Red Crest Championship up here on Lake Beautiful Lake Norman, right here in the middle of downtown Charlotte. And uh, we're here at the outdoor show. You can tell there's a lot of people in here swamp right now. But just, just a quick thought, three of my all-time top postponed lures. Number one would definitely be top water. Top water is the most effective in the area where I'm from. Blueback Herring Lakes dominated by top water. So a top water walking bait, Zoom Super Fluke, and probably a buzz bait. Number top three postponed lures of all time. Hey, it's Kevin Van Dam here. We're at the Mossy Oak booth here at Red Crest and we're doing a couple little videos. So, you know, the post spawn is coming up in a lot of regions of the country here in the next month or so and it'll progress further north. So key baits for the post spawn are lures that have a lot of action and stay in the strike zone for a long time. So, you know, if I've got clear water, it's always going to be a jerk bait. One of my other favorites is a top water, you know, either a sexy dog or a KVD splash popper. You know, a, a top water creates a lot of disturbance. It's something you can keep in the strike zone or close to a target for a long time, and it's gonna be a really good bait. Beyond that, you always have to have a good finesse bait, and I like plastics that have a lot of appendages. Again, things that kind of swim. So my favorite is the Strike King Game Hog. I throw it on a light sinker, and instead of just pitching it into a target and letting it fall, I swim it around a lot, like make it long hops and, and glide it around. It looks like a bluegill lot. They're really focused on chasing bluegills during the post spawn, so it's a really good bait. You know, Obviously, conditions and cover dictates a lot of your lure choice, but those are three that I don't go anywhere without during the post spawn. All right, guys post-spawn fishing. A lot of people would consider it a tough time of year. It's one of my favorites. And the biggest reason for that is a lot of the fish that have been so concerned with actually spawning and moving around, doing all this crazy stuff associated with the spawn, they're finally getting out offshore now. And that's like my favorite way to fish. I like to get out off the points and humps and breaks and uh, you know catch those fish a little bit deeper. Use my electronic stuff like that. One technique that I think is underutilized in the post-spawn People just, it's got kind of an aura to it that some people love it, some people don't like doing it. Carolina rig. It catches big fish. It's a great way to feel and know what's on the bottom. And uh, when you have a fish hooked, you hardly ever lose it. You know, it's one of those techniques that when you hook a fish, that fish is coming in the boat, unlike stuff like top water, stuff like that. So, Carolina rig, um, find those spawning areas and back out. Find the first point, the first drop off, the first hump, the first saddle. The first anything that's outside of the spawning areas, doesn't have to be super deep, you know, five to 20 feet of water, drag that Carolina rig. If I had one bait, it would be a Berkeley Power Lizard, probably a six inch power bait lizard, uh, watermelon color. Um, another great bait to use is, uh, you know, some type of creature bait, like a power hog, something like that. But Carolina rig, give it a shot. You will catch some big post spawn bass, I promise. Hey guys, I'm Randall Tharp. I'm standing here at the Red Crest Expo and it's that time of year. The bass are spawning, so I want to talk about my favorite way to target post-spawn bass, which is what's coming up here in the next couple months all over the country. And there's not a better or more exciting way to catch a bass than on a topwater lure, and that's what I'm going to recommend. It's when that technique shines the most, and my number one post-spawn Top water lure is a walking bait. For me personally, it's a from Arc Fishing International Outlaw three hook 
pencil type bait that has a very distinct loud knock and it's going to work anywhere from your spawning pockets out to main lake points over deep water. So I like 10, about 10 foot deep or less. If it's really clear, you can draw them up a little deeper than that. Those are places I would target fish with it. I throw it on 30 pound braided line, gamma braided line with a monofilament leader. And I always tie directly to the bait with a loop knot. So those are my tips for post spawn fishing. And man, you tie on your favorite topwater walking bait and it's the best time of the year, the most fun action you'll have. So, so get out there, get after it and uh, hopefully you'll get that big one to, to commit and blow up on that lure and get him in the boat. So there you have it from the pros. Now you know what you need to go buy. I'll have links to all the products down in the description below. We're checking out. And if you wanna hear more tips from the pros, I actually made another video while I was at Redcrest and that will be right below me. You can check out all about river fishing. River fishing from the best in the game you gotta watch it, see you there. And always remember that education is important, but fishing is essential.